More than 5,000 signatures are on a petition to recognize the different Pacific languages spoken in New Zealand, and the number is increasing. 300 of those on the petition is from the island, as strong supporters of the Pacific Lao Bilingual Coalition in New Zealand. But questions are also asked as to where Niwe's Language Commission is placed at present. According to one of the facilitators of Niwe's supporting petition, 300 names were signed in support of Niweans New Zealand to the Government of New Zealand for Pacific families to have access to quality bilingual education programs that teach literacy in English and Pacific languages. Director of New West Town and We, Moira Enetama, said the reason she is in full support of the petition is because the same resources are used in New West and that needs recognition to continue. Chairman of the Pacific Lao Bilingual Coalition, Ifukoka, said the government's decision to cut the publication of Pacific literacy materials puts all bilingual and Pacific languages and literacy programs at risk, including NCEA and scholarship level courses. Even though support continues from Niue for the Language Coalition, the island's own Language Commission is far from starting as disputes over how a selection of language experts can form a committee, among other issues. Previous endorsements by Cabinet for the Language Commission to form a committee before the bill is passed in the House has been challenged, with one of the experts suggesting that the Language Committee should not be selected from an advertisement, rather a combined effort of qualified Wangahauniwe professionals to oversee the project. After two attempts to table the bill in the House of Assembly, it was referred to the Bills Committee in 2009 for discussion, and there it stayed. It is yet to prove whether the new language commission on the island will eventuate, or like that of New Zealand, a petition might be required for the bill to be accelerated into discussions in the House of Assembly. Addressing climate change in the Pacific by building capacity in climate science is the focus of the Pacific Climate Change Science Program that is currently being implemented by the Bureau of Meteorology of Australia. There are 15 Pacific Island countries that are involved in this project. In the past two years, a number of computer-based climate tools have been developed to assist countries to better understand their climate. A team of scientists are on the island from the PCCSP, and they are here this week as an introduction to climate change science with a one-day training session that was held yesterday with key stakeholders, an opportunity to induce, introduce a newly developed computer-based climate tool titled Climate Futures that is part of the science research program. The program really is about getting a better understanding of the past climate of the Pacific. What drives the climate in the Pacific? Why do you get rain in certain, um, more rain in certain seasons than other seasons? Um, so it's really getting a better understanding, a science understanding of the, of the climate of this area, including Niue. And this projections tool has used a lot of that um, research in understanding the climate. It's taken global climate models, which we use to make climate projections, which are computer-based models, and it's assessed how well they actually simulate the current climate of the Pacific. And if they haven't simulated the current climate very well, then we don't think they're going to be very good at simulating the future climate. So out of the 24 global climate models that the scientists have assessed, they've said 18 are really good at, um, you know, at projecting at simulating the climate of the Pacific. So that's some of the research. We've used those 18 models in this climate projections web tool. So we have some confidence in those models. Um, and we've also done a lot of work trying to get an understanding of what the Pacific needs are and what sort of information they need, simplifying the information and making it more easily available for them. The Climate Futures tool um, that we're doing some training in today is available for um, people in a number of different sectors. So basically we understand that climate change is a problem for all sectors of, of government and NGOs in, in New Way. So it might affect food, um, fishing, it might affect, um, you know, obviously the Met Service is going to be really interested in what happens with the weather, but it also will impact on a number of other different sectors. So this, this tool is actually, um, the basic level of the tool is available for everyone free on the internet. 
and this will be available at the end of the year when all the other countries have received the training as well. At the moment, the stakeholders in the room now um, will have access to it until then. And then 10 people who are more technical climate change officers, maybe working on a, a climate change project in their own area, um, will be involved in advanced training and that will really allow them to think about what might happen in the future in certain time periods and different emission scenarios in terms of carbon dioxide being released into the atmosphere. And so they'll be able to see what the climate might look around 2030, around 2055 and around 2090. Climate Futures will also provide a new approach to accessing information about how Nui's future climate may look and is also the outcome of two years of research. For the next few days, selected staff will be involved in advanced training and discussions with stakeholders have shown that the level of interest and awareness on the island is very high and that people are also well informed on climate change issues. There's been a lot of very informed discussion and debate about how to better plan and predict things so that the fishing industry, for example, is you know, aware of what changes might happen in the climate so they can you know, better adapt to those changes. So there's been a lot of really interesting discussion and I think people here seem very well aware of what's happening in their local environment. That's where they live, they're very used to the, the climate. Um, it is interesting to see how traditional knowledge about the climate and the current science can you know, be brought in together and it's been a really nice discussion. We've learnt a lot from them and hopefully they've learnt a lot from us too. The new event service is hoping that stakeholders will make use of this training and also be able to utilise the new tool in their respective areas of work where relevant. The training and tools will also be helpful with planning and adapting to climate change, taking into account traditional knowledge and climate science. The Pacific Plan, endorsed by Pacific Island Forum leaders in 2005, has recorded good achievements in the past year, despite continuing challenges in the implementation of the plan. The achievements are contained in the 2011 Annual Pacific Plan Progress Report, presented to the meeting of the Pacific Plan Action Committee, underway at the Forum Secretariat in Suva, Fiji. PPAC is the committee mandated by the Forum leaders to oversee the implementation of the plan. The report states that in the fisheries sector, a number of regional maritime surveillance operations were conducted to detect illegal, unreported and unregulated fishing. The largest of these was Operation Kurukuru in November last year, which covered the exclusive economic zones of the Cook Islands, Fiji, Kiribati, Niue, Papua New Guinea, Samoa, Solomon Islands, Tokelau, Tonga, Tuvalu and Vanuatu, and areas of the high seas covering over 12 million square kilometres. In the area of climate change, significant developments include the establishment of crop executive subcommittees on climate change to coordinate the efforts of regional agencies. In response to a request to improve access to and management of climate change financing, Agreement was also reached at the Pacific Climate Change Roundtable held in Niue earlier this year on coordinating regional responses by establishing a working group on mitigation, adaptation and mainstreaming climate change resources and climate change information and knowledge management. As part of the implementation of the Forum Compact on Strengthening Development Cooperation Period Reviews were conducted in Vanuatu, Niue and Tuvalu in 2011. The annual 2011 Pacific Plan Progress Report states that while there have been achievements under the plan in 2010 and 2011, major challenges remain. This includes ongoing negotiations on trade agreements under the Pacific Islands Countries Trade Agreement, PICTA, Pacific Agreements on Closer Economic Relations, PESA Plus, and the Economic Partnership Agreement, EPA, with the European Union. These are also major stresses on the region from the impact of climate change and the rising cost of fuel and food. The report said that in considering the challenges, it is important to again highlight the potential benefits that regional integration and cooperation offers the Pacific region. The full annual 2011 Pacific Plan Progress Report will be released after the 42nd Pacific Islands Forum in Auckland, New Zealand from the 6th 
to the 9th of September. And new developments at the Public Works Department has seen construction started on a brand new storage shed to house important tools and equipment for the Water Supply Division. This is part of the department's asset management plan, which will also clear the way for planned refurbishments of the main building. Plans are in the pipeline for an overhaul of the dilapidated Water Division main office that was formerly the island's copper drying shed that is now 50 years old and long overdue for some beautification. The Water Supply Division has been stationed at this location since 1989. The planned renovations will proceed once materials arrive on the next boat within the next few months. This will also guarantee good occupational health and safety conditions for water supply staff and the whole division. That concludes our news bulletin for tonight. We do hope that you can join us again for our next news bulletin on Thursday evening.